think that if, if you're right to avoid that, I started a very important introspection and conversation. But I don't think that we can speak um, in constructive ways, in the ways our nation was constructed, um, really finding each other and with open and honest dialogue, unless we take this media tribunal idea off the table after the NGC, and unless we don't slim down that protection of information bill so that it is so that it's in line, in sync with our constitution and doesn't classify almost any piece of government paper. Mm -hmm. I do think underlying what's been said tonight is that there is room for discussion about the core issues um, around the state and issues and problems of our media. But I do think the media tribunal is a diversion. Take it off the table and we can discuss the real issues and stop discussing yes. fantasy issues that uh, won't make it to the constitutional court anyway. And um, I do think, also, I think one has to point a finger at government and say you address the private sector media, but on the other two sectors, public and community, you really have to account for yourself. If you're really concerned about the quality of journalism, please think about your handling of the SABC, A, and B, get serious about promoting community media. Um, so I would say, look to yourselves. First of all. I was saying it's a, a problem of transformation with institutions that self-regulate. I think we have to acknowledge that there's a problem with transformation full stop. From the presidency right through the state and parastatals into every sphere of South Africa, including uh, civil society, NGOs, what have you. We have the biggest income inequality gap in the world and it is widening. South Africans are getting less, the, the vast majority, not the owners of the print media, the vast majority, are getting less every year to get by on. It's a toxic cocktail, and we are, we are failing to transform. I think there's, there, there are a number of bills in Parliament at the moment. The media tribunal is not, I doubt whether the ANC has got the political capital to enforce a media tribunal. I mean, when have they ever managed to enforce uh, such radical legislation on such a privileged section of our society? The other bills we need to keep an eye on. <laughs> the other bills we need to keep an eye on, the Protection of Information Act has been mentioned. There's the Public Service Broadcasting Bill, which gives the minister a lot of influence over the SABC and says that every community radio station should have a representative of the municipality in their board. <laughs> huh? also, well, that's a good question. Some of us would like to tell our donors that the bill has gone quiet because the Department of Communications said it would be passed by May. We'd like to tell our donors it hasn't been passed because we're excellent lobbyists. <laughs> but some of us believe that the reason the bill hasn't been passed is because it proposes radical measures to fund the SABC, up to 1% tax on salaries, no? and radical measures to fund the NDDA. And some of us believe that ANC's economic policy is at odds with that kind of transformative agenda. But maybe it was us and our lobby, who knows? <laughs> uh, uh, look, let me, let me wrap up to say that I don't think this, I agree with everything fair that Antoine have said, this media tribunal can't happen in its current form. I haven't heard in either of them acknowledge that the current onward system is weak. I think it is and it needs to be strengthened. But the damage in a sense has been done and is being done. Media practitioners everywhere are shaking. And the self-censorship and the chilling effect of this discussion may well be what certain characters within the Tripartite Alliance, they think that's the best they can get, let them get that, because I don't think they can nationalize the mines. I don't think they can nationalize the banks. I'd love to see them do both. Jackson, <laughs> Lastly, very quickly. Very quickly. There's the biggest story in the last six months has barely been reported. 
It's not the World Cup, it's not the Mafia saga of Sudebi. In the last six months, South Africa has lost over 230,000 jobs. These are the quarterly workforce stats, so it doesn't mean the job losses have stopped. If you take a conservative statistic which says for every worker there are five dependents, it means over a million South Africans in the last six months have lost their income. And, and, you, all the evening now. and you know where I learned about it? Firstly, I took my dictionary and read the business day. Secondly, I read about it in a month. <laughs> And I want to start with my encouraging everyone to take out a subscription. Okay, it's not just an effort. It's one of the only ways we will survive. Thank you. Jackson, never let it be said that the Madam Guardian doesn't give the agency the last word. <laughs> really thank the engagement. <coughs> the, the purpose of the discussion document, because indeed we came with this resolution from Uruguay, there might not have been a need for us to produce another discussion document, but we did so. So that all of us, because we, we are quite cautious on whatever direction we take, and again we would like all South Africans to participate in whatever line of direction we take. So we are, we are quite impressed uh, with the participation that we have seen, particularly from the media fraternity on our document. And again, we, we would like to thank our colleagues in the print media for acknowledging that we do have problems. And uh, we need to deal with these problems. Again, thank the, the Ombudsman for saying that yes, we can find a way of dealing with these matters that might be proposed, not necessarily in the form that they are proposed, but we might find a way of dealing with whatever problems that we have in the print media environment. And we'd like to thank all of you. And by the way, happy 25th birthday. Thank you.